Hi everybody, it's Agnes and welcome to an interview and we've got Wayne McDaniel today. Hello Wayne. How are you doing? It's so good to see you and so good to speak to you. So good to connect with you. Likewise, um, likewise. I, very good. Yep. I'm actually going to tell the viewers how you and I kind of orbited and went boing. I was, oh. yeah, it's amazing. I was um, with my friend Linda who lives in a pocket of Sydney that we both move around in. And what she showed me was that you had, you were doing very similar things to me and very interested in affirmations, meditations, all this stuff. And it ended up that while I had met Linda to have this conversation and you popped in as a suggestion on Facebook four days before, Another close friend of mine had already sent me a podcast that I hadn't even looked at and it was Tracy interviewing you and it was for the show, The Ticket. And I'm going to put a link down below for that because I just finished listening to it yesterday and it was such a great interview. And I just thought, wow, these two points have just come in. I had in. such fun with her. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was so good because it talked about the sports and it talked about the metaphysical stuff and your creative stuff and it kind of all brought it all together and it really gave me an insight into you to interview you today but so that's how you and i have sort of come together the degrees and, of separation yeah it was only like getting degrees of separation. <laughs> yeah it was just one of those funny moments and i i thought because i had said to source God, the universe. Yeah. I want to interview seven wonderful men leading up to Valentine's day because last Valentine's mm -hmm. day was all about the women. So this year I thought, Hey, I want to do the men. I want to hear what they have to say. Uncensored really about Valentine's day. Cause I don't think women know really yeah. and relationships and the whole thing about I need to get, I need to get, I need to get. And right. is it really about that? So firstly, what are your thoughts about what are your thoughts about Valentine's Day as a male in 2019? <laughs> wow. Look, I mean, it's not something that is deeply on my radar, but I know I know it's I sense it when it comes up in February. And I think in terms of um you know, this idea of this romantic love notion that we have in relationships is powerful. But for me, the most powerful part of it is the simple everyday gestures, the simple spontaneous things that we do for our loved ones that um, may not have anything to do with a box of chocolate. So it may not have anything to do with a, a rose as I look at a rose in front of me just about to go into bloom um, here in the front yard. So um, for me, it's, it's a reminder. That day is a reminder of the simple, little, mundane, everyday, subconscious, automatic things that we do with our partners that we take for granted where we can bring in greater presence greater mm. awareness. And I said on a Facebook post recently that my only resolution for this year, I don't have any goals for this year as in I want to get to there. I want to do that. Mm. I just have one resolution. And the only resolution that I have for the entire year is to be a better listener. That's it. That's it. Everything I do, whatever creative activity I move through in relationships and family and friends and creative um, connections is to simply be a better listener. How can I be a better unconditional listener? So, wow. Yeah. yeah, so Valentine's Day for me is just yep. a, re a reaffirmation mm. and gesture and, you know, go get the dozen rolls. That's all fine. That's all great. But for me, it's those little... Yeah. The little things, it's the little everyday mundane things. Those are the areas, those are the moments that we need to bring beauty, presence, yeah. love, 
attention, awareness, unconditionally to our relationships. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's interesting because it's so associated with physical stuff. Yes. Like Science Day. And when you're in a relationship and you've been in a relationship for a long time, it's, it's still maintaining those moments between you. I mean, I was in, in my relationship recently when it was my birthday at the end of the year, my partner took me to the Motown show in London because I live half over there and half in Sydney. And that growing up in Canada, because that's where I grew up at the time, growing up with Motown, that was one of the greatest gifts of all was to enjoy music with somebody and my music from my generation, from my time, that means something to me. So yeah, it was just like, wow, this is just incredible. So doing things that I think are meaningful to that person. Mm. Yeah. The specific things that are really, really the, the gritty things that that person really loves. I think that, and remembering that they like those things. I think that, is a wonderful gift, whether it's an experience or a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's the remembering of it, isn't it? It's the continual consistency of it. That's where it really makes it. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So just so the viewers get a little bit of background on you, where did you hatch? I mean, I've I've researched you, but they (laughs) they won't know. Where did you hatch? Where did I hatch? Yeah. I came to clean up my mom's womb. <laughs> and go. Yeah. <laughs> in the beautiful city of San Francisco. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically where I, where I grew up and moved to Australia in 1983 to play basketball for the Adelaide 36ers in 1983. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know what's interesting, Wayne? Mm-hmm. When I looked that up on your Wikipedia, you and I arrived in Australia the exact same year. Wow. Yeah, 83. What, mo- what month did you arrive? January, 1983. January 3rd, 1983. Yeah. On that Qantas flight, and as I, I said to Tracy Holmes, the most powerful, one of the most powerful things was to see the sea of red roofs over Sydney as we come down in, you know, past Bondi and in, into the city proper and down into the, the Kingston Smith Airport. Just yeah. this red roofs of houses. It was amazing to me. I'd never seen that before. Yeah. Uh, and then to sweep into this clear blue, crystal blue water of Bondi for me. It's, it's like, wow, I'm here. It's paradise. Yeah. Yeah. And 33 years later, it's still paradise, isn't it? <laughs> more of a paradise now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, growing up in San Francisco, um, I studied drama in school and high yeah. school, which along with, I didn't really start to play basketball until I was about 15, seriously. Yeah. Um, and I had, had that major growth spurt. But drama was something, you know, acting and drama was something that I always loved to do. Always loved to create, always loved to create character. Yeah. Always loved character with voice and character with, you know, what I wrote. English was my favorite subject, always is has been and always is, you know, still is now. I love writing. Um, and I love the power of words. Words are very powerful. Mm. Uh, as anyone who's, you know, privy to the law of attraction uh, knows how powerful words are as a vibrational frequency. Words are very powerful. Not just words you speak to others, but words you speak to yourself. Yeah. Self-talk is powerful. I'm really big on self-talk. But, yeah. Uh, and then, so, yeah, played play in Australia. From 83 till about 96, 96, my final year. Um, but didn't really get into the, the mind-body development phase until probably 88, 88 in there. Um, went to a seminar with an American, uh, I guess back then you'd call him a motivational speaker. His name was Lewis Tice. And he had a, he had a company called the Pacific Institute. And they were all about affirmations and visualizations and writing affirmations and how to visualize. And, and the most powerful element of that was about self-talk and why self-talk is so important in setting up not only how we see ourselves, 
how we see the world and how we see possibilities within the world. Um, so yeah, that was that was that kind of kicked me along into it. You know, that gave me a quantum leap, if you want to call it that, into personal development. Yeah. And then years after that, I discovered meditation and yoga, and kind of kind of went went that way. Yeah, it was powerful. It was you good. said you said Wayne that meditation saved your life. What did you mean by that? Ooh, great, juicy, lovely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just dealing with so much past. You know, I didn't, really, I didn't know my father until I was 18. And the first time I saw my father was on an episode of Lassie, watching the television series Lassie. Yeah. Father. And just, you know, just dealing with the anger of not having him. The anger, mm. um, you know, just childhood things, issues, conditioning from my childhood that would come up would, would um, put me in an, an angry state when mm -hmm. externally, you know, you'd say, well, what do you got to be angry about? You know, here you are playing basketball, traveling, and, and you know, da 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 as a sportsman. Yeah. Uh, meditation just changed, literally changed my whole energy from a, from a cellular level, you know, in terms of just how I reacted or responded to life. Um, and it was my therapy, and it continues to be my therapy every day. You know, I just, just finished a nice 40-minute breath ex exercise before we began this, this broadcast. And, um, yeah, mm -hmm. meditation saved my life in terms of it just made me a calmer person mm. in terms of how I saw the world um, yeah. and how I saw possibilities within myself. It just, it just opened me up to so much more of, of of what could be possible. Mm. Mm. I think um, when you're doing, I mean, you were doing professional basketball, which I can't even imagine how intense that would be in terms of go, 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 go all the time, mentally, physically, and to not have, I mean, you just see in sports so often just the anger levels that, come up and when you were starting to meditate did you have any of those issues like you do see a lot of sports people have did you have the anger issues too major anger issues okay dates with with um in relationships not that i hit anyone or hurt anyone but just emotional stuff yeah just yeah. just holding stuff in that you know i needed I needed to kind of talk about or yep. kind of find ways to, to constructively and creatively um, use. Uh, and that's where acting helped me a lot too. So that combination of, of creating character and acting um, together was a powerful little duo because it helped me release and channel some emotion into character and it continues to do, do that to this day. Mm. Yeah, so that, that combination of, of moving into breath work. Yeah. People get daunted by meditation because they think they have this fallacy that, oh, I got to sit down and clear my thoughts. Yeah. I have to clear my, I have to. There's a doing thing in that. I have to do this. I yeah. have thoughts. Well, no, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just focus on your breathing. Mm. And when I'm up, you 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 notice the thoughts like clouds on a on a blue sky, but those yeah. clouds go, and what remains is the blue sky clearness of your mind. That's always going to be there, no matter how overcast the day is. It's, there's that sky, that blue sky. That's your mind. Mm. That's, that's the ground swell, the ground nature of who you are. So the clouds, the thoughts are like clouds. But yeah. If you go to the blue part of your mind, which is the breath the essence of who you are, you know, the spirit of who you are, that space between your breath going in and going out will allow those thoughts to dissipate more and more. Mm. Uh, and then you, you, you literally open yourself up to the universe. You know, I think you open yourself up to greater and greater possibility uh, of who you can be and how you can respond to life and how yeah. you can create. We talked about creation before we went on air, but yep. how, yep. how how we then can allow the creative process to, to inform us of who we can be and who the, you know, what's the greatest version of, of who we can be. Mm. 
who we can be. Yeah. So yeah, that combination of meditation and acting yes. has been powerful. So the trifactor of meditation, sport, and acting has been enormously powerful for me. And as I look at it now, I can see how that trifactor has elevated to higher and higher levels. You know, whereas before, I would, if you look at it like chakras, you know, you look at the, the, the kind of the, the, the navel, you know, so you got the, the, the ground level of your chakra, that fire coming up through your belly, you know, the orange, and then you move into your heart where that green space mm. is in your heart. You know, that's probably where I am now with all these three things. So relationships, meditation, sport, how I see my coaching now, giving back to kids, yeah. and then acting and presenting and writing, my own, my own writing, how I see all that fused into now is in a heart space, is moving into a mm. heart space. Everything is green. What I see before me right now as we do this broadcast is green, green trees, green grass, mm. grass on the side of the street. I see everything more and more in a green growing type of, of, of reality. So mm. um, it, may, it may sound kind of funny to some people, but that's just how I create from mm. movement of, 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 of energy, of, of, of you know, internal energy. Yeah. yeah. You know, what's interesting, Wayne, is I wrote a book called Emerald City. Wow. And it was about um, just the, you know, in The Wizard of Oz, how they went along that journey. Mm -hmm. And when they got to the wizard, he was just a man behind a screen. And then they realized they already had it within them along that whole journey. Now, when, when I was researching that, I had no idea. I had been in Sydney for, well, since 1983. I wrote this book in 2009, I think. Mm. I had no idea that they referred to Sydney as the Emerald City. Wow, I didn't know that. I know. I, when you go to Google and you research that, they tell you why. It, it was so interesting. And I thought, we have lived in this city for how long? And you don't hear about that, but it was, it's interesting you talking about all the green because our city of Sydney is referred to as the Emerald City. I wonder where that comes from. I have to find that yeah. out. Yeah. Look, I can't remember now, but it, it is so worth looking at because you're talking about the heart chakra and the green. It's one of those amazing things because it's like what you're doing personally is linking in with where you're living. Yes. Yeah. And the connection between me being from San Francisco and San Francisco and Sydney being sister cities. Yes, yes. Element I have to investigate. Yeah, it's really interesting. When I was researching <laughs> that, I thought, wow, I had no idea. This is incredible. And we do have a lot of greenery in this city. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful cities, I think. It's just stunning, Sydney. Absolutely. Yeah. Very hot today, but still very stunning. <laughs> yeah, really hot today. I wanted to ask you as well about the mechanics of Neville Goddard because this stuff is, I could talk about it endlessly. It's so fascinating what he has taught the world. Absolutely. What parts of Neville do you find are, because I do know that you read Neville, what parts do you, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> it's just, wow. What parts do you find the most interesting? You know how they actually so had the secret, you had what the yep. belief. I'm surprised no one's done. Maybe I should look at that and research it and see. Because he was a fascinating man. Ah. Oh. Right. He saved, right. you know how you said meditation saved your life? I would say Neville and meditation saved my life. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I cut, I cut you off then. What do you, no. find, what do you find about Neville really is the, the mechanics, the juice that you've really applied and got results from? Beautiful. The two things, the two areas of his philosophy that I find the most powerful, one is his emphasis on the human imagination. Mm. So what we sleep on and we think, in our busy world, you know, we're goal orientated and, oh, I got to get from here to here. And if I just think about it, I'll happen. Books like The Secret and, and things say, look, you know, you know, think about it and dwell on it and, 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 you know, speak on it and it'll happen. It will on one level. 
but our imagination is we we don't when he says when Neville says that God is our imagination, that freaks a lot of people out because they go, What yeah. do you mean by God? Well, that's our imagination yeah. is the God presence within us. So taking all the religious, you know, the Christian and whatever, all the religious connotations out of it, if you imagine God as being the supreme uh, creative force, put it that way, because he's the creator, you know, with, you know, you say God's the creator, whatever. Um, it's this creative force, and that's what our imagination is. Albert Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. Yep. He's probably one of the greatest thinkers of all time, mm. right? Intellectual thinkers of all time. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is our preview of coming attraction. But what most people get tripped up on, and this, I'm only really just scratching the surface with this now in terms of how I can allow for things to show up in my life, is the, the, the emphasis on feeling. We get stuck on the word, we get stuck on the thought. And Greg Braden talks about this a lot in terms of how he interprets um, you know, ancient philosophies. And people go, oh, emotions and feelings, oh, they're just the same thing. The thought, the emotion in our, in our solar plex, the feeling in our heart. The people at heart mass are doing great work uh, in terms of you know, the power of, of the human heart and how powerful, how the heart actually has uh, receptors on it that are more powerful than the brain, right? So the heart is not just something that pumps blood, it's actually a thinking, mechanism that we actually can think from the heart mm. so neville's emphasis on imagination and feeling feeling gets the blessing it's when we can feel what we can imagine mm. that's where the manifestation takes place mm. because when we hold that feeling with the picture as a done deal as a natural effortless, free-flowing reality, that's when the manifestation is at its most powerful, most powerful process, most powerful level. Mm. Yeah, his, his emphasis on the imagination and feeling is, is, yeah. is really, you know, does it for me. It's the core of, of his, you know, if you think of everything he writes about, is written about, yeah. imagination and feeling are at the core of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So imagination and feeling for me is what what puts me up in terms of you know the new what what they call the new thought movement. You know, he was kind of at that forefront of the new thought movement with mm. people like Ernest Holmes and yep. Shin and people like that. Yeah. Um, but he he was certainly you know he was certainly a pioneer in terms of how he articulated and wrote about it. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Four, I've got about four Neville books. Yeah. Uh, one that I listen to the most and the one that I have on replay constantly is, is The Power of Feeling. Feeling gets the blessing um, because he talks about prayer. Yeah. He talks about how powerful sleep is, right? So your state of mind before you go to sleep is what impresses your subconscious mind. And that is how you determine your day, the next day. Yeah. How the state of the state of mind before you go to sleep is the most powerful moment that you can actually impress upon your subconscious mind. Mm. You can do it in the morning too. That's powerful because you're just coming out of that. that yeah. But before you go to sleep, yeah. That's that's the that's the moment, man. Like that's yeah. the moment. To actually, say, look, this is what I this is what I am. And this is what will manifest. Yeah. Mm. So. yeah, it's like you're pushing little seeds into the dirt and then they germinate, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, sleep, mm. you have no conscious control, but your subconscious then goes to work and, and you know, ways we can never imagine. Yeah. <laughs> starts to get those wheels in motion for you. And, and the thing is, too, I want to emphasize, too, and it's, it's a, the consistency. Most people, some people can do it every now and then and visualize something every now and then. I'll do it today and I'll miss two weeks. Oh, I better do that again. You never get the take unless you can do it on a consistent level. Because what science understands now in quantum physics in terms of um, 
uh, neurobiology in terms of um, epigenetics is how we can reprogram the neurons, the, the connections in our mind, the connections in our brain, mind just being an activity of our brain. And um, it's, the, it's the repetition of that feeling of, of the new idea, the new activity, mm. the new way of being, the new thing we want, the new whatever it is, the new reality. It's the consistency of the visual and the feeling with repetition that gets it. That's what, that's, you know, that's yeah. for me, holy grail. For you know, sure. Consistency. Doing it every now and then once a week is like, uh, yeah. You're not really, really going to make a big deal. Mm. But it's the discipline. And this is that, this is what I call the marriage of opposites. It's the, it's the marriage of discipline and focus with the rich, fertile ground of imagination, intuition, creativity. Those two, when they can be married, you know, internally within you, you can have that discipline of focus. Uh, and I use this a lot when, you know, when I was playing basketball, um, you know, to visualize consistently how I want to see myself shooting or how I want to see myself oh. playing or whatever. Um, how that's how. So, Wayne, just the mechanics of that. Yep. Would you run through it like you imagine the same scene and you go through it and you go through it like on a loop? Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. And each time, each time I would see it as more organic, more natural, more yep. of an automatic way that I am. Not that I will be, but that I am. Right? And having it be present moment. So we, we talk about affirmations. And um, Lou Tice talked about this back in the mid 80s. Affirmations need to be personal. I, you can't affirm for anyone else. And you yes. can't affirm for who you used to be. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You, you can only affirm for who you are now, energetically, right now. So personal, positive, obviously, it can be negative if you want to go that way. <laughs> but Positive words, words that evoke emotion, words that evoke the verbs, the action, right? personal, positive, and most of all, present tense. Yeah. You can't, have, I will be healthier. That's, that's a lot less powerful than I am healthy, right? Yeah. Even, don't, even if you know on an intellectual basis that you're not healthy, if you can affirm that and believe it as a done deal now, presently, Consistently, mm. presently, it, it it can't help but manifest. It's like the law of gravity. It yeah. Has to happen on some level. Now, it may not happen exactly as you see the picture in your mind, but energetically, vibrationally, the frequency has to manifest on some level, in some way. You know, uh, regardless of how it may look. And this yeah. trip trip some people up too. I want it to look this way. It has to look this way. No. Yes. It has to feel this way. How it looks, nothing. nothing yeah. Exactly. Nothing exactly. That's, not, that's out of our. That's out yeah. Of our I that's agree. Another, <laughs> feel, yeah, feelings are so much more important than thought alone. You know? and, and you actually restrict when you go into this thing of thinking that you're in charge of timing and packaging. Because you don't know how it's going to be packaged and you don't know when it's going to happen. But it's when you can really let go of that. I found that's yeah. when the most amazing things I could never have conceived pop into render, shape. Yeah. Render is important, isn't it? It is. Like, Actually, it's funny you bring I, that up. I, no, I was just yeah. going to say, I go, I go to the Oprah Winfrey story so much. She got the role in the movie, The Color Purple. Yes. You go to, you know, you can go to that video. Oh. It's bumps up my spine every time I look at it because you just think first of all you think you think of how many people she's influenced in a positive way right so yeah. just think of that global kind of scope but then you think of that moment that she started singing I surrender all I said bless and say I surrender all she's singing this song yeah totally letting go of the fact that she's going to get this role thinking mm. Alfred get the role you know it's a done deal. She's she's in, and and before that, she so intently wanted the role. 
she's so focused on the role. I'm getting this role. I've got to get this role. I've got to get this role. Yeah. To then, to then flip that to, I surrender. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. It is you know, what it I, is. You know what I mean? And then to have Steven Spielberg ring her in the gym and say, if you lose another pound, you're going to lose this role. I need you on a plane to LA ASAP. Boom. Yeah. And Boom. she was thinking she was too fat. She said, they didn't call me because I'm too fat or I'm too this. Or I'm too. Yeah. Like it's a, from a, from a, from an energetic point of view, because we know what she is about and we know that she has studied this stuff and we know, you know, she believes in the law of attraction. She believes in all that. You know, she believes in energy and she believes in the power of thought. Yeah. Uh, it's powerful. It is. He is one of the most powerful examples, modern day examples of surrender. Yeah. Uh, that anyone can, can kind of go to because it's just, it's so real. It's so, it's so highly energetic on, on such a big inspirational level. Mm. Mm. I think, you know, when you start doing all this, because it, everybody sort of comes to this, I hear again and again and again, Law of attraction, law of attraction, law of attraction, law of attraction. But when you start to really look at that the law of attraction really is the photocopy that comes back through your law of projection and your law of assumption, it's like you start doing all the imaginal work when you're listening to Neville and when you're listening to Abraham Hicks, you're putting into practice because she's very good at mm. how you feel, feel, just feel good, just feel good, just feel good. Neville is imagination creates reality. God is your own human imagination. Living in the end. He's very big on the living in the end. You know that collapsing space and time. Yeah. But I find, and, and let me know what you think about this, over the years, yes, all the processes, do this, do that, that's all really well and good. But I've got to a point where I see that it's two halves of a nut, all the action stuff, but it's the mm -hmm. inaction stuff. The mm. allowing, the letting go, the surrendering, you do your imaginal scene, you let go, and you basically trust one yourself, trust the God within, trust the process, and mm. you, you lean away. You're not always in there trying to something. You mm. get back away. And do you find now, having done this work for a while, I don't know, maybe it's because we're in our 50s, moving on from, because I was a real action figure in 20s, 30s and 40s for the mm -hmm. law of attraction. What, can, what next thing can I do? I've got to train my mind. I've got to, but it's releasing all that now and being more calm, peace and surrendered. And like what you mentioned before we started recording, the allowing component. I think you hit the nail right on the head. I think it's when we're younger, when we're in our 30s and mid 30s, we're still in that action orientated phase. It's yeah. like, I, gotta, I gotta go get, I gotta go get. And that's, it's not a moral issue. It's not like, oh my God, what are you doing? You can't do that. That's a mm. necessary part of the process. But then in the, the other part of that evolution, as you say, as you get older, you get into your 40s and mid 40s and beyond. Yeah. Then start to realize that there's a whole lot of stuff that you don't have control of, you know? And your best, your best bet as such is to get into that vibrational reality that you want, irrespective of what it looks like. Yeah. And I had, I had this, uh, I did this last year. I said, um, I didn't do any resolutions last year, so it's a year from now sort of thing. I'm moving into 2018, the start of 2018. I said, I want to do two movies. Yeah. And that I want to do two. I had other, you know, other little goals and stuff that revolved around different areas of my life. But those are two powerful ones. I said, I'm going to do two movies before the end of the year. And within, within, a week of, within a week of not, all I did was I visualized a movie camera. That's it. Ah, okay. Yeah. I didn't visualize character. I didn't visualize what type of set it would look like. I didn't visualize um, anything else. All I visualized was seeing me in front of a camera 
and then hearing the activity of a camera crew setting up all the activity, the chatter, the this, the that, the setting up of the next scene. I visualized that for about, I think it was about six days in a row. Yeah. Um, each time I did it, it got more and more powerful. I used joy. I used laughter. I used excitement within that scene, within that scene that I would visualize morning and night for about, well, it only took like about a minute, minute, maybe two minutes max. Yeah. But after six days, I got an audition to go to a movie called The Whistleblower, which is uh, a Chinese Australian co-production. Yeah. So I went, I went to it uh, in Redfern, went to the audition, great audition. And I thought, uh, no, I didn't do this right. And I kind of messed that line up and that, and that. <laughs> Within three days, they offered me a role. And the lady said, um, she goes, we knew it was hard for you to get the lines down. We weren't really worried about that. She said, but what we loved about you was your energy, the energy that you brought. The energy was, was exactly what we wanted. And I got the role. And then I did the same thing. I said, now there's another one I've got to get. And I, I visualized the same, similar situation. But this time I visualized it in a, in a different kind of, I had the, the surroundings were different. It was more expansive. It was more kind of um, more open. Um, same thing, visualized it, felt the emotion. And then I went to audition for this thing called um, Reckoning. Yeah. A Sony Pictures movie, uh, a co-production uh, that's going to be shown in the States probably later this year. And the, the, the character I originally auditioned for was a smaller role, and they liked me. But then two days after I did that reading, they said, look, we want you to come back for another role. It's a little bit, a little bit bigger. Can you come back and, and read for it? I said, yeah, sure. Came back and read for it. Within 24 hours, I got the And... Like it was just the energetic feeling of mm. saying that I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. Yeah, I it wasn't gonna get it. I just embodied the character, and I didn't really even care if I got it or not. Yeah, I just said to my, I can just embody this character. <laughs> I can embody it. Like it's it's fun. I had fun with it. I literally yep. laughed. Mm. I literally laughed during the callback for both of those roles. Mm. Had fun with it, and they were like, wow. I changed my voice around for one of them and, and, and everything. And um, yeah, it was, it was just powerful, really, really powerful. Um, so what I like about, another thing I like about Neville is this emphasis on living in the end. Living as though it's a done deal. Yeah. That is so important because many people project and they go, oh, I will be healthier when I lose 10 pounds. I will yeah. be healthier. I I will be this when this happens. I will be this when I get that new position. I will be more loving when my partner doesn't trust the life. I will be this when this happens. More external things have to change before I can then realize something within myself. To so know, I can, if, I, if I can use my imagination, feel it as a natural happening right now in this moment and consistently keep it there, it's a done deal. I'm yeah. already there vibration. Now, how that manifests in the physical reality is not up to me. Like yeah. that, that's so powerful. And I think as we get older, going back to your original, um, your original question, as we get older, we realize that intellect can only take us so far. Mm. That imagination, if not flights of fancy where we just kind of like, you know, just you know, let our minds wander, that's good. But it's, again, it's the marriage of opposites. It's when we can let that wandering imagination then be called and then be directed to some end or some state of being or some reality that we want to allow. When Ooh. those work together, that's where creation happens. That, to me, is where, is where the, that's the holy grail of creation. Mm. When I look at it, if you're a Christian, you go, oh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Right, the thought, the emotion, and the feeling. Same yes, thought, yes. Emotion, the feeling, the head, the yeah. gut, and the heart. Yeah. All those three. That's the Trinity: the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's all just a metaphor for mm. creation. 
metaphor mm. for thesis. Yeah. And, and, you know, a thesis, a synthesis, and an antithesis. That's what they are. We have a thesis, which is a thought. Yeah. A synthesis, which is a thought and the emotion working together. And then an antithesis from thought, gut, into heart. That, that's, that, that whole process is, is a pretty fun deal to me. That's, that's uh, I've never heard it described that way, so that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a thought is an origin. A thought is yeah. an, an idea. It's a possibility. Yeah. Whatever happens, we don't know. I mean, we have, what, 67,000 mm. thoughts a day. So when a thought goes into an emotion, yeah. then it gets some momentum. And it's kind of like, hang on a minute, this is something. Mm. Now, that, that can be a good emotion, it can be a bad emotion. Mm. It can be a good thought. It can be a bad thought. It's not a moral issue of good or bad. It just yeah. gives energy. So and, it, and it has consequences, good or bad. Mm. That's both ways. Yeah. Society. Yeah. But when it gets to the heart, that's when, you know, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's, it's when it gets to the heart and when it's expressed consistently from the heart, it's a done deal. I mean, you yeah. look at any, any person who's achieved greatness in life in the world, scope. Everything they've done that's worthwhile, they've done it from the heart. Mm. Just, you look at it, it hasn't been really an intellectual, an intellectual deal of, of, you know, intellectually working out, rationally working out. The heart, the imagination, intuition have all been very, very powerful uh, to, get them, to get them over the top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. When, if you had a time in your life where you were experiencing something that was really unpleasant, you know, those moments where you feel like the roadrunner that's been hit by the Acme truck. Mm, the powerful metaphor you just used, because <laughs> what I'm about to tell you is, is almost is, is spot on. Okay, go, go. <laughs> well, um, in 2004, I was, uh, I was in singing and a, a conference, a party, an end of year party for some accountants up on the central coast of New South Wales in, in Gosford. Yep. After I finished this gig, uh, my friend said, look, why don't you stay with me, man? Like, just, just stay up here in the central coast and we'll chill out and have breakfast in the morning. I said, look, like, I, I got to get back, man. I got some stuff Saturday in the morning. I want to get done. Had some company to do and stuff. So I drove back, but I was so tired. I fell asleep at the wheel. And my car flipped over near Chat and just coming into Chatswood. Yeah. Flipped over on the center divide. This is how the ambulance guy described it to me when they do the little drawings and they, and they backtrack how your car landed and everything. Took them an hour and a half to get me out of the car. So I flipped over the center divider after I fell asleep at the wheel. I had 19 stitches in my right hand, so right up my right hand, I can't show you now, but <laughs> uh, 19 stitches in my right hand and I fractured my pelvis, my, my right hip, fractured it, yeah. shattered it. Yeah. Uh, and in 2011, I had a hip replacement for that right hip, put a titanium hip in there uh, at St. Vincent's Hospital. But when I, before I got the hip replacement in 2011, so my partner said, look, you got to do it. Just do it. Like, you know, you got to do it. You know, my, mm. leg was, my leg was a little bit shorter than my left leg and stuff. And, you know, I, had, I was limping a little bit. And, you know, I could use a cane sometimes and stuff. And it was frustrating because we were living in Manly at the time. And I would run on the beach every morning. I you know, do stretches and do yoga on the beach. And it was so carefree. And I thought I was Superman. It's such a beautiful lifestyle to be able to do that. And then all of a sudden to not be able to do that. Mm period of time was, was a massive shock for me and athlete. You know, yeah. we played for, for years and years and years. All of a sudden, I couldn't do it. One, it was very humbling, but then I said, look, I've got to use my mind. I've got to use the power of my mind in some way of this recovery. And so before I had my hip replacement in St. Vincent's, Dr. Neil, uh, you know, who, who, who did my hip replacement, he said, um, 
you know, what do you, you need to prepare for this? And he showed me what would happen and, and you know, what the possibilities were and said, how are you going to prepare for it? And I said, look, uh, doctor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize uh, insatiably. He said, oh, okay. That's, that's good. What are you going to visualize? I said, I'm going to visualize what the hip's going to look like, what I'm going to do in my recovery, and how the progression of the recovery is going to be and how I'm going to feel after that. So two weeks out of the hip replacement, I visualized my recovery. I visualized the operation. I visual he showed me actually what the titanium hip would look like. He showed me, actually showed it to me. So I actually visualized it inside of me. I visualized what it would look like once they put it in there, right? You know, what would it look like? How would it feel? How strong would I get? What exercises would I do? Mm. So much swimming, so much therapy. And I just visualized it. And then when I went back for my checkup, maybe a week after the operation, actually a few de- a, f- a couple of days after the operation, me and the family went up to the Blue Mountains and I did a two-hour walk up yeah. through the Blue Mountains. Um, and so a week after, that was a great result right there because it felt fantastic. A week after mm-hmm. that, I go in and see him, get a checkup. He says, this, he says I said, how many would, of these would you do a year? He said, over 150. Over 150 hip replacements a year. Yeah. And Wayne, yours is one of the best results I've ever seen. Wow. And he said, I, what you did? He goes, I don't know. He goes, look, I'm not. <laughs> His words so vividly. He goes, look, I'm not into the new age woo stuff. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a surgeon. This is what I do. I go in and I replace stuff and I fix stuff. You know, it's very mechanical in that way. Yeah. But he said, whatever you did, um, he said, I couldn't, he said, your leg's going to be about a fraction of an inch shorter, like between an eighth of an inch shorter than your left leg. Because I couldn't actually set it any better because I'd stretched too much of the nerve ending. Uh-huh. He said, but what you did, the result that you got was so good. He said, I applaud you for whatever you've done. He said, you, you got a powerful mind and you used it in a powerful way. But yeah, that, that was, um, wow. Very traumatic. Yeah. Very very powerful in that it was very humbling, you know, to go through what I went through, you know, for me to be such this, you know, this fit yep. guy and all the time and just, you know, did weights and yoga and, and just so mm. physical, powerful then, to then be on crutches and, and be, you know, laid up for so long and stuff. Yeah. And, but then to also be humbled by it. Yeah. Was, was very powerful. And then mm. also a lot of, you know, using my mind, using the power of my, my imagination, directing the power of my imagination and feeling to get the best possible result mm. uh, was, um, was one of the things that, again, you know, you have these doubts and you kind of go, oh, law of attraction, great. You know, you use it and you get results and then you, you know, you get involved in your the concrete reality of your life. And you may, you know, you may not use affirmations as regularly as you used to or, you know, you may not visualize as much as you used to. And then, you, and then something like this happens. And then you mm. go, wow, that's a wake-up call. Yeah. Beautiful and then, wake-up call. Yeah, and then you see what you're really made of, like all the stuff I've learned. Now it's time to really Put it in practice. pinpointed focus. Yeah. Wow. That's, um, like you say, very traumatic. And then you're turning lemons into lemonade, so to speak. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just had something pop into my head. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, when we were looking at your Facebook thing, she, this was the one thing that said, I have to interview this guy. It was yeah. so funny. You, I, I really, I'd ne- I thought, wow. And we laughed our heads off and you, and we could, we went back through your Facebook. We couldn't find it. <laughs> So I don't know if I've got the words right, but you said something to the effect of, and this I'm taking, I mean, we've been talking about the main meal here. This is a side salad. Yeah. But it was, you said, if you want bigger boobs, you need to read better books. (laughs) (laughs) Where I got that from? What was that about? Oh, that was... Make me remember it. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought... I have never heard 
word that worded in the same, put those things in the same sentence. It was, we laughed. I, I yeah. ended up spitting my tea all over the table because it was right. just one of those really funny moments. So you don't remember where that came from. Vaguely. But <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, some, <laughs> something silly. Someone might have had implants or something. Oh. Something like lines, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a great comment because I do think, and I do hear, I get a lot of emails because I, you yeah. know, with the work I do, people email and say, oh, I want to, you know, can you help me imagine and create a scene? Because I do yeah. a lot of working through the mechanics of Neville. And people say, oh, can you help me create a scene? So I've got, you know, this really beautiful waist and this lovely boobs. And, and I remember thinking, you yeah. need to do more self-love, <laughs> you know, but you worded it in such uh, a way. <laughs> Wayne, that yeah. would make a great T-shirt. <laughs> Go to hey, yeah, you want bigger boobs, read better books. <laughs> I <love that. laughs> It's just that would be. I reckon if you made that that T-shirt, it would sell <laughs> out. <laughs> Someone's probably onto that right now. Yeah, probably. Oh, get that printed out. I'll sell them at the market. Yeah, yeah. Go, to, go down to the opera house, <laughs> the opera house markets, and sell it down there. Oh, I wanted to mention. What was the other thing? There was another thing that I, oh, yes, the Sapphires movie. I wanted to talk about that because yep. I, I, you know, we're doing an Australian interview today. It is Australia yep. Day technically today. Yep. That movie was so incredible. Did you apply the visualising the Neville staff to get in there? 100%. Here's oh. the story. When I originally met Wayne Blair, the director, I read for the main manager, which my friend Don Batty got, right? Donald's a voiceover guy, he's an American guy, which is still based in Melbourne. He got yep. that role, that role. And I visualized that role. And then when I didn't hear back from my agent, I thought it was a surrender moment. It was yep. like, uh, oh, well, good luck. I didn't know who we were going to, you know, who would got it, who would get the role, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I get a call. Wayne wants you to go to Fox Studios and read for another role that's been created, which is a U.S. manager. It's just a small role. It's not hidden, not big, but he really, he's really keen on you coming in to read. So I go in, I read, and I just, I had this vision about like a 70s cool kind of African-American cat, not a pimp. But like someone who's just like a cool guy, who's just like a used car salesman. He's slick. He's got the gift of gab. Da, 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 da. So I had this vision, this, this, this idea of a character in my mind as I go in and read for this character. Actually, it wasn't at Fox Studios. It was in Redfin. So I go in and read for this other manager who would be the U.S. manager for the Sapphires. And um, it was powerful. Like I, I knew I was going to get it. Like, and he goes, Thanks, Wayne. Thanks so much. You know, and then within a couple of days, boom, I had it. And not realizing that was going to be such a big movie. Um, mm. you know, that, you know, that um, Deborah Melman, who I admire so much as an as an actress, uh, you know, she's so talented, so so talented. And then to make you know to meet and, and do the scene with um, Jessica Malboy was was powerful. When I walked into the trailer where they were doing their makeup. So I arrived on set, it's way down in Camden, down south of the city. You know, oh. I so I shot that, that scene that I was in. And then I walked in there and I walked into their trailer and so her and Deborah Melman are getting their makeup done. And I just, I don't know, I just started singing Sam Cooke. I just started singing, darling you, send me, honey should do, honey should do. I should do whoa started singing that and then so Jessica turns around and she goes oh my god keep going keep going keep going <laughs> and then, oh no, we got to get a new wardrobe so they whisk me in the wardrobe so I can put on my gear to do the scene mm. 
he was so effortless and the whole shoot was was so effortless and um it was it was just a, a beautiful experience mm. you know? beautiful experience because it was just creating but it was so organic you know i could i could do him anywhere i wanted to and he comes off that jeep and goes in there and looks at him, you know, does what he says what he needs to say about her and all that um yeah mm. power. the power of surrender that was about the power of surrender yeah that was yeah. the power of surrender. Yeah. Yeah. That what was, a that was great it. experience. I think yeah. you're, you're such a great example of combining the whatever, whatever subject you want to call it. I, I find new age just doesn't do it justice. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's so much imagination creates reality. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a more tightened focus way yeah. of saying it. And then getting combining that work with creative work, that I, that to me it doesn't get better than that. When, when you can be free living that, and and you're no longer doing a job you don't want to do, or because so many people do jobs they hate, so many. But you're combining the best of those two things: creative, wonderful exploration making money and also applying all this stuff that we've talked about today. I just yeah. find that so exciting. It's endless, endless to talk about that. So yeah. good. Yeah, on and on and on, huh? It's funny yeah. how you get all these things that, you know, I used to do voice work. I used to do characters and stuff when I was a little kid in my yeah. room. Yeah. I picked up a basketball. <laughs> it's funny all those things just come full circle. Yeah. I was always visualizing. I realized I was always visualizing even before I knew what visualization was. We're always visualizing. We're always doing it. Yeah. But as a yeah. kid, I would sit in my room and visualize myself on the radio, speaking, announcing, reading copy. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff has come full circle now in terms of what I do and, and, and you know, what excites me. Mm. The next thing I want to do, the next area I want, not conquer, that's the wrong word, but the next area I want to align myself with is speaking in public. Yeah. Speaking in public. So telling my story, talking yep. about action, talking about manifesting, yep. talk about, talking about the power of vibration, how we have the power to be able to direct our vibration for, 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 good, for good means. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's the next mm. thing I imagine myself seeing. Um, yeah endeavoring to do endeavoring to inspire other people yeah yeah to be able to pay it forward mm. you know and it's funny because in the area that you and i are live in they've got a pay it forward facebook group <laughs> so it's it's paying it forward on a bigger scale whether it's on youtube whether it's on a stage whether it's at a gathering or but paying things forward. And I think once you understand the mechanics of all this, all the laws, how, how the mind really creates. And like we said, it really creating is the wrong word. It's already created. It's like a bookshelf with books on it. And you go, I'm going to read this book and I'm going to, and that book oh, comes forward. And it doesn't, that. yeah, it doesn't mean that the other books cease to exist. It just means you're not reading them for the, that moment. So they lay dormant on the bookshelf. So love that analogy. That's powerful. Yeah. It's easier to see it because it's visual. It's a, it's easier to see it, but Oh, this is such a good subject. Honestly, I, I it's an unquenchable thirst for me talking about this yeah. stuff <laughs> really is. It's so, and to find people that just love it as much as you and, and apply it, working creatively because you know i've never been a nine to five i've always found that quite repulsive <laughs> i i have to be beating to my own drum moving around living in different places and enjoying meaningful conversations about creativity about bringing success through creativity and using the law of attraction neville wayne dyer joe dispenza because he came abraham, around, abraham okay. hicks yeah and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this interview, Wayne. Thank you so much for Thanks. popping on. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, it's been a pleasure. 
been a pleasure. I've yes. enjoyed it. Feels like we'll a com hours, com we'll talk for hours on this stuff. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so thank you for giving your time and um, I'm going to put down lots of bits and pieces about you down below. If you have time to pop onto the YouTube, I'll let you know when it goes up and if you want to answer some comments in the thread, if you have time, you know, cool. If you don't, that's fine. But I think um, there's lots of good nuggets in there for people to... Um, Hopefully it inspires people to start moving in the creative direction and using the two halves of the nut, you know, the work, internal work that we do through meditation, affirmations, visualizing, and then also injecting that into the meaningful work area of your life. It's got to be practical, hasn't it? It does. Got to be practical in terms mm. of what you do in your daily life. Yes, yes. One thing to read about it, it's another thing to read someone else's story or hear about someone else's reality with it, but to actually apply it to what you do in your mm. own or seven, like it's, yeah. it, that's where, that's where the, the nectar, the nectar is. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. And seeing what, how you can shape the external world, how you can shape it through thought projection through, you know, focus, meditation, bringing it towards you. There's very little you've got to do out there. It's all in here. And then it maneuvers. I remember Neville said in a story, oh, it was when he was um, talking about he wanted to leave the army, but he didn't want to kind of leave on bad terms. He said he wanted to be honorably discharged. Great story. Yeah, and there was a line in there where he said, "the the whoever he was, the corporal or the the guy in charge, he mm. said he had no idea that he was under the suggestion of my projection and my assumptions. He had no idea he was mm. under the influence of that." And I remember thinking, "Wow, that's what happens. People start to maneuver towards you, like in the stories you shared today." People yes. start coming in. They offer you the role. They give you yes. the part. They yes. offer you the thing. Like how you and I came together today, I was asking for wonderful men that were able to discuss these concepts that are, I think, the foundation of life and that that I could have some really great, for me, great conversation and storytelling. That is the cherry on the cake for me to share those things and that that information goes forth and gives someone else inspiration and relief. So, yeah, that's that. Paying it forward, that's exactly what it paying is. Paying it forward. So I will say to be continued with you, Wayne. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we will say goodbye. And Wayne, do you want to just hang on and we'll say goodbye in private? Bye, everybody. I hope you yes. enjoyed the interview. Wayne, do you want to say goodbye to the YouTube people? <laughs> Thank you. So long, YouTube people. Thank you so <laughs> Beautiful. Keep the, Keep the love. Yeah.